It's a four-minute drill, gentlemen. A minute each to plead your case. The question today, which player is winning training camp? Um, we begin with, let's say it's Arif Hassan. Starts off. You oh, get boy. one minute. I'll have the timer going, and I'll tell you when your time <laughs> is done. Ready, get set, go. Uh, I'll say Cameron Dancer is the player that's winning training camp right now. I think we all entered camp with the assumption that even though Cameron Dancer was going to be at the top of the depth chart playing with the ones, it was going to be Andrew Booth who eventually starts week one, takes a spot. I mean, and, and he's, you know, a remarkably talented player, was going to be a first-round pick if not for the injuries. But Dantzler has had a phenomenal camp. I think a lot of people, I think fairly so, were disappointed with his level of play, especially in, in high-level situations. But coming off of a, a number of, of, of really excellent practices where he's been able to generate pass deflections against Kirk Cousins while covering Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, K.J. Osborne, while covering basically any route. He's been able to win deep downfield. He's been able to win against comeback routes. He's been able to win against square ends. He's been able to win against fades. He's been able to generate interceptions. He's been able to force fumbles. I mean, he's had a phenomenal camp at times. At times, he looks like he might even be better than Patrick Peterson. I don't think that's the case, but the fact that he's been able to put that up there, force himself into the conversation to be a starter, I think tells us he's the one winning training camp, especially because a couple of years he's got a contract Time. Uh, coming up. Luke Braun. I definitely agree with Dantzler because he was the one that had the most to lose with a bad camp. Like, he could have ended up benched if he came out and sucked, and instead he came out and solidified his place in the starting lineup. Um, but in the interest of, of throwing more names out there, I want to throw out Christian Derisaw, who seems to have taken a big step forward. There's that Trent Williams thing. Now, nobody in the Vikings wanted to say he's Trent Williams right now, but they did say he looks like he might be Trent Williams soon, which is still like a really, really <laughs> bold thing to say. And I'm not familiar enough with Trent Williams' game in particular to know if that's a good comp or not, but I've seen him do a lot of really great stuff, in particular in recovery, in reps that didn't start out well, but where he could flip his hips, go make a comeback, get himself back in front of the guy, or in some Ten. cases, just throw the dude out the club. He got Janarius Robinson on the ground after getting spun, just pushed him over, got him on the ground, win the rep, pancake, boom. Dude's killing it. Time. I'll kick it over to Luke Inman. Well, first of all, love the Dantzler hype that we're here. And sounds like he had another great day of practice yesterday. K.J. Osborne's got to be near the top two. Hype is real. Maybe looking at a guy on the verge of a 1,000-yard receiving, double-digit touchdowns as a wide receiver. Three, that's pretty incredible. But Luke Brown stole mine. I got to go with Derisaw again. I got to give him some love because I called him out on our show, me and Reggie's show, a few weeks ago as a guy that I don't think it's safe to assume. Just We're all assuming that he's going to go out there and be great, but I needed to see him go out there and prove it. And he's certainly done that and more, as Luke said. He's checked all the boxes every practice, holding it down against Hunter and Zedarius, two of the best in the biz. NFL Network, as Luke mentioned, comes out, coaches see shades of Trent Williams in his game. But just when I watch him, too, out on the field, he looks bigger. He came out of Virginia Tech with all the athleticism, but to see him bulk up, put a little bit more of an anchor, and even the upper body strength, great sign that he's ready to hold his own on Ten. the island against bigger power rushers in the second year. Take that big leap. And that's exciting for Vikings fans because it feels like we're one good season away from Derisaw being good, that we finally Time. have two good bookend left tackles. or tackles, uh, And we haven't been able to say that in, what, five, six years. Yeah, stole my thunder a little bit with Dantzler, but I was going to go with anybody named Cameron because I think Cameron Bynum has also been a big winner by thus far stiff-arming Lewis Seen for that starting role. I think we went in assuming that Dantzler would be threatened and maybe passed by Andrew Booth and that Bynum would be threatened and passed by Lewis Seen. And thus far, I don't think it's a major competition. I think Dantzler has entrenched himself <laughs> as a starter, and I think the people were foolish – to be giving up on him when he was ranked 16th and 22nd amongst corners in his first two seasons in the NFL. Those are really good numbers and were definitely biased against some of his late game meltdowns. But we also forget that Cameron Bynum was just transitioning to safety for the first time ever last year and that he played brilliantly in the two games and the team handpicked him to be sort of their safety of the future. So I'm a big fan of Bynum. I'm a big fan of Dantzler and I think they're both starters week one.